Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you, God, for being able to gather again on this last day of 2023, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other, no other name I know. Well, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Well, it's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. No other. No other name I know. Well, power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. No other, no other name I know. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody, no, nobody. Nobody, no, nobody. Nobody, no, nobody. Nobody, no, nobody. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody rock me like Jesus. Can't nobody rock me like Jesus. Nobody, no, nobody. No. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory shall be mine. Well, love, love shall be mine. Let 
Mine. It shall be mine. It shall be mine. 
One last thing before I get out your way. I really want you to declare it's something about using your mouth. It's something about using your mouth. Whether you need to say, I'm taking it back. Whether you say, I'm, it shall be mine. Whatever it is, I really want you to declare that thing today. From this day. Somebody say, from this day, I shall walk in peace. From this day, I shall get my mind back. From this day, I shall get my health back. From this day, not tomorrow, not next month, from this day, I'm taking it back. I'm standing on the word of the Lord. I'm standing on the promises of the Lord. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back, y'all. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back, y'all. Take it back in the spirit. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. You are no longer keep me bound. You are no longer have my mind. You are no longer have my heart. I'm taking it back. yourself okay. declared for yourself you need to give God praise come yes. on let's give God praise Woo. so often the enemy would take something from you but you can't always blame the enemy for taking something from you you got to understand that sometimes God would take something from you there's some things that we need in our life and there's some things that we don't need in our life. When we ask God to move something out of us, when we begin to ask God to help us to become more like you and less like the world, God start removing things. It doesn't feel comfortable when he removed those things because those things that he's going to remove, he removed those things that, that, that makes you feel good. He removed those things that in your mind you thought you needed. But God would stop moving people out of your life. God would stop moving things and items that you worship, things that you thought you needed every day. When you think that you need a person to survive, all you need is God to survive. Because when you start leaning on people and things, God will remove that very thing so that all you would see is the Lord. You wake up in the morning, only person you can see is the Lord. I don't want to see nobody else. If I can't call on the name of the Lord when I wake up, I just want to see you, Lord. If my sons and my daughters don't come around me, I just want to see you, Lord. I just want to see you for myself. And those are the things that we got to understand that it ain't going to feel comfortable because 2024 is just hours away hours away and we're preparing ourselves to go into this next year anybody want to be in the same place they was in last year this year anybody want to go through the same hell the same losses and the same things do you want any of the things that God took from you you want them back do you want them back do you want some things back do you want those things back hallelujah because I serve a God who make all things new all things new. I don't want to be this person I was back then. I want to be a per better person in 2024 than I was in 2023. I want to be a better husband to my wife than I was in 2023. I want to be a better father to my children than I was in 2023. I want to be a better grandfather to my grandchildren than I was in 2023. I want to be a, I want to be a better leader than I was in 2023 to the members of Redeemed Faith Fellowship. Come on, somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. We're just going to have a short service today, so I want you to prepare your hearts to be blessed on this morning. Amen. Those of you that don't have an envelope, lift your hands and the ushers will bring you an envelope. Amen. 
I believe God's going to do something great. I believe he's going to do something great. I'm going to put it this way. I know he's going to do something great. Because everything you tried to start in 2023, God said you're going to start it. That thing going to start. Everything you've been trying to crank up and get going, that new business, that new, that, that, that new house, that new car, God said he's going to make that thing manifest in your life in 2024. Somebody say, it's mine. It's mine and I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we're standing to our feet, we got the basket back there. Did we got the basket? on this morning. Amen. Glorify you. We come to glorify you. You are worthy, Lord. We give our lives before you. You are worthy, Lord. You brought us through 2023. We want to tell you You've been mighty, mighty good. We want to tell you thank you. Didn't have to heal our bodies, but you did. You regulated our minds and gave us peace. That surpasses all understanding. We want to glorify you, Lord. We come to bless your name. Everybody had a chance to be a blessing unto the Lord. Amen. 
Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. I'll be here early because I got a lot of stuff. I got to straighten up upstairs. So I'll be here about 8 o'clock, 8.30. Huh? Who? Oh, okay. Is that CP time? <laughs> 9 o'clock. If you on CP time. Amen. We want to get in here. We're going to do a, you know, um, loud the ministers, all of us ministers. We're going to say something. We're going to do what we call a preachathon. So we're going to start, and that's about five minutes each for each minister. Now come with your guns loaded. Come with your guns loaded. Now if we do at at ten, at eleven fifty. It's a cutoff time. That's when we're going to be praying and we're going to be on our knees praying until that next year. Amen. So don't be disappointed if you didn't get your word out. Charge it to God. Amen. But just come with your guns loaded. Come, come ready. Amen. Just in case some of the uh, leaders, we want to make sure we'll put up a timer up there so we'll recognize the five minutes as it's counting down. Amen. But as the Holy Ghost will lead us, the Holy Ghost will take us. We're not going to quench the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So tonight, I'm glad to have my lovely wife back in the house. Let's give God praise for her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. I want you to just point your hand toward this basket because this is our last Sunday this year. Because whatever you've been asking God for this year, God going to do it next year. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for increases right now, God. I thank you for the many blessings that's going to fall upon your people. I thank you, God, because they ask you for a house this year, a car this year, dear God, that all year long you've been setting them up, getting them prepared for 2024, God, for their blessing, for them to walk into their miracle. And just hours away from this time right now, Lord, they're going to be walking into their blessing. They're going to be walking into their destiny. They're going to be walking into their healing. They're going to be walking into their purpose. And everything that they've been fighting with in 2023, I declare and decree that that life is over. Somebody say, it is over. Hallelujah. I'm not going to, hallelujah. When you come here tonight, just remember that when you cross over, you're not going to look like what you've been through in 2023. Somebody need to give God praise because you're going to look a whole lot better than the hell that you've been through in 2023. Some of us grieved. Some of us, our backs been up against the wall. Some of us walk with weight on our shoulders. But 2023, so long. So, Father, as you bless this offering and the purpose in which it's going to be used, I thank you for the life and legacy for all your people, your children. God, I'm going to thank you that you're going to heal my uncle. Deacon Davis, I thank you for his healing. I thank you for his healing. Come on, somebody. Y'all need to come on now. I got some notices I want to serve to 2023 before 2024 come in. Hallelujah. Don't y'all got some notice that y'all want to serve the 2023? Hallelujah. Because what, what, what we've been through in 2023, I can't allow I cannot allow what I went through in 2023 to go with me into 2024. So I got some notices. So tonight when you come, bring your notice of eviction. Bring your notice of eviction. Bring your notice of conviction. Bring your notice, hallelujah, for your purpose. So 
Father, we thank you in advance for the miracles. We thank you for those who gave via Giveify. Thank you for the many blessings, for the offerings, for the project as that's been built up. We thank you, God, because we know that we have not because we ask not. So, God, I thank you for the building. Somebody say thank you for the building. I thank you for the expansion. I thank you for the expansion. Oh, God. I thank you in advance that, that God, that while you're expanding this ministry, somebody, while you're expanding this ministry, God, I thank you, God, for building houses for those that ask. I thank you for new jobs. I thank you for new promotions. I thank you for increases. I thank you for doing it, Lord. I thank you, God, for turning it around right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let the church say amen. We're going to do it. This is our last Sunday. We're going to keep doing it. Come on. God, I need for you to move some walls. God, I need you to expand our territory. I want you to repeat after me. Saints of God, Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. You know, I've learned a long time ago that anything that's under pressure will explode. After everything that we've been through, and we believe in God to expand our territory, expand our homes, expand our lives, expand our legacy. We need for God to cause that thing to explode in 2024. So I want you to say it like you mean it. Young people all the way to the oldest person in this place. Take a deep breath and say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. Now I got one more question. If you don't believe it, but I got the I got to ask a question to the believers. If you believe it, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Now put a praise on it. Give God praise. Put a praise on it. put a praise on it. Come on, come on, come on. I need a few people to put a praise. Come on, put it. Come on, I feel it in the atmosphere. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Somebody need to pour out. Somebody came to release something early. Somebody need to pour out to release that, release that. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. praise on it. I gotta put a praise on it because I can't go back to where I came from. I gotta put a praise on it. Hallelujah. Stop dumping it. Stop dumping it. Stop pouring out. Stop pouring out. It's in you. Let it flow out of your belly. Tell God thank you. I've learned, come on up here, auntie, come on. I've learned that, I learned that in the process of waiting on God to do what I need him to do for me in my life, I learned to seal it with a praise. It's no accident that some of us are still waiting on God for something. The only problem is God is waiting on you to put a what? If I'm asking something from God, I need to seal it with a praise. 
Hallelujah. Because don't. Let me help somebody here real quick. That if I'm going to seal what I'm asking God for with a praise, we have, when we get ready to send envelopes out in the mail, we typically what? Seal it. So when we're sending something up to God, when we're questioning something from God, we're sending something up. So when we, in order for us to seal that thing, we need to seal it with a praise. So when we seal that thing with a praise, it can't be tampered with. The enemy can't stop it. The only person can stop it is the one that don't put a praise on it. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this right here. Those of you that are going to come tonight, bring something. Bring a bill or a letter and set it on an altar and just dance on it. Because God said, I'm going to fix that thing that you wanted me to fix in 2024. Now that he said, now that I got your attention, now that I got your attention, I want you to dance over it. I want you to dance over it. I want you to dance over it because it's going to be done. It's going to be done. It's going to be done. How many of you are tired of renting houses? How many of you want to be an owner? I saw one person stand up. I need, I need people that want to be an owner to stand up to their feet. Hallelujah. Because some, some of y'all, some of y'all are paying just as much for rent as it would cost for a house. If you're paying over a thousand dollars a month for rent, that's about a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage. That's a nice house. Y'all need to give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you need to start claiming old things, claiming old things, because who told you you can't have it? Oh, the bank ain't gonna loan it to me. That bank said no. It don't mean another bank that ain't out there ain't willing to take a chance and help you get that blessing. Because just like you've been paying rent all year long, that's a track record. And if you follow that track record, you take your track record and say, look, I've been paying this much for this long. And I haven't got, I haven't been late one time. That bank, some banks will look at that and open that door for you to get that blessing. But you have to make that move of faith. The only way that door is not going to open is if you keep standing outside the door. The door of doubt. The door of doubt. You got to believe God for that next move. Do you believe God for the next move? Lift your hands and tell God yes. Amen, everybody. God is so good. I want to thank him for the storms in 2023 because that must mean the blessings are coming in 2024, right? Right? So we all been through something. It's been a rough year. But I'm thanking him in advance for the blessings that he's about to bring my way. Well, everybody's way. Amen? Amen. Our um, announcements are as follows. Every first Sunday at 10 a.m. is the minister, deacon, and deaconess class. So it will be next Sunday. Amen? Amen. Volunteers. We, 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 we left this year with a bang. So let's start off next year with, with a bigger bang. I really appreciate what everybody has done for the last two um, things that we did as far as coming together and getting things together and pulling together so that there won't be so much weight on one or two people. So let's continue that throughout this year. Amen? Amen? And those young people who need their hours, Jazz not here right now. She need to see me because she's supposed to be here next week. I ain't calling no names and stuff like that. But she need hours for, for um, her graduation, so um, tell her to call me. But if you need volunteer hours, just let us know so that you can get them in, amen? Because we'll be doing a lot down here. Even during the week, you can come down and, and do, do ours, amen? Amen. So volunteers, they're crucial to us taking it to the next level, to redeem faith fellowship, taking it to the next level. So when we need y'all, we need y'all. Even if you don't see anything going on and you want to do something, just say the word. Just say the word. Amen. New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. 
So service is tonight at 930. Those who are on CP time, that means 9 o'clock to you. Because we know that if we tell you 9 o'clock, you'll be here at 930. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Those who don't know what CP time means, tell the people time. Y'all know our timing is different from everybody else's time. Amen. So just psych yourself out. I need to be there at 9 o'clock. Guaranteed you're going to make it here at 930. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> um, also tonight we'll be doing baptisms after, immediately after the, um, the um, service. And also we will have food afterwards. We have hot dogs, chili dogs, and Polishes. Amen. Faith will have the only fried Polish because that's what she requested. Ain't he, Denny? Amen. Tuesday um, night Bible study from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, please join Pastor Charles and Redeemed Faith Fellowship on Google Meet. Um, I have the Google Meet address, or you can do it on Facebook Live. Amen. If you need a ride to church, please contact Pastor, and he will delegate who will be picking you up. Food pantry every second and fourth Tuesday from noon to 2. If you are in need of food before then, you can come down to the church Monday through Friday. Well, not this week. This week it will be Wednesday. Oh, I thought I heard somebody saying, Psh. <laughs> Wednesday through Friday from um, any time from 9.30 to 2. Amen. If you have any non-perishable food and would like to donate, please drop it off here at Redeemed Faith Fellowship. The First Lady is asking that there be no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Um, water is allowed in the pastor's Gatorade. Amen. Let's continue to do our part in helping in the project because the project is going to happen. Amen. It's going to happen. We don't know when, but it's going to happen. Amen. We claiming it. We claiming it. Amen. It's already done. I, I got I got to announce something. Let me go get it. What I left. So. Um, we got a creative genius amongst us. Hope, stand up. Yeah, I'm going to make you stand up. So Hope has been really um, such a creative genius to you that God has given her. She is such a blessing. I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, Hope is so talented, and I wish she could see what everybody else see. I wish she could see what everybody else see. When I say talented, she draws, she paints, she sings, she dances, and, it's, and it comes so easy to her. Right now, she's creating books, prayer, prayer, prayer journals. Y'all seen them on Facebook. These little books are little notebooks that she makes, and she personalizes them. So if anybody want to purchase these, they're like $6 a piece. She do have an Etsy. Etsy? Is it Etsy? I'm sorry. Etsy um, website, so you guys can go there and purchase her items. So let's, let's, let's continue to... Um, push her. Amen. Amen. God is good. Any other announcements? Amen. Any other announcements? Any guests? Would you please stand? I see there aren't any. If um, these are your announcements, please govern yourself accordingly. Man, let's give the Lord praise. Listen, tonight, 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 it will be a free raffle for those that's going to be here on tonight at the service. Well, during the service, we will be passing out free tickets, one ticket per person. And we do have a 50 inch smart TV to give away one of those prizes. So, that, so I know a lot of y'all got 65s and 75s. And, 90 inch TVs in their houses. 
Amen. <laughs> we got 75, I think it's really big. But uh, we got probably have a few more items, but there also is going to be a uh, cash drawings also for the kids and adults again, like we did last week Sunday. Amen. So I want to prepare your hearts, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, and then also, also we're still doing who brought the most members in December. Who did that? Anybody been keeping account? April? <laughs> Throw them hands. <laughs> uh, this, did he, he had about nine of us in the whole row? Uh, okay. No, Joseph had a... Uh, yep, so... You've been keeping you've been keeping the council April. She won. Oh, we're gonna continue to the night. Oh, we you got smoke tonight, okay. Uh, she about to break a record then. That's what she said. Go ahead, Joseph. Give her, give her, give her, give her a run for the money. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So we really believe in God. But I'm gonna ask also, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some young folks, some young folks, some young folks. If you don't mind, because we're gonna set up the basketball court upstairs. And we got some stuff to move around, but I'm not going to move it around now because we also have other church service after our service, and they use that upstairs for uh, for uh, their kid uh, church upstairs. So what we're going to do, so tonight I'm going to be here at about 8, 8.30. It won't take that long, so if I can get a couple of young men, a couple of young people to come down to help me out, amen. Because you know me, I'll do it. Me and my wife will do it. She'll be moving basketball courts, moving tables. We got a basketball court up and also the games that are on the stage. We're going to have that set up the uh, kids' basketball court and a bounce house. So for about an hour after we get finished doing this, 1 o'clock, we'll be up out of here. There's going to be food and everything else left over. Amen. So if you do come, y'all do get y'all something to eat, something to drink. Amen. To celebrate with us. Amen. Uh, and then help us clean up. Amen. Let's give God praise. Let's have a call for the praise team to come and uh, bring another uh, selection. And uh, we ain't going to be here long today. So once they get finished singing, uh, Pastor Charles. All right. I told Pastor Charles to be ready this Sunday morning. And we all going to be ready tonight. I'll be the one doing the last uh, closeout. I was gonna ask uh, I was gonna ask Pastor Charles tonight also when he does uh, tonight when we start. Go ahead, bro. Rob finna sing a song for us. Come on, Rob. <laughs> Amen. Hold your mic up. And you woke me up. I must sleep. It's the first time I had a text. And the text kept saying, Brula, Brula, wake up. Call me, call me. <laughs> and when I woke up, I called him and he answered. <sighs> he answered again. I called him again. He Let him call you back. I stayed there. I'm sorry, y'all. The Lord just put this on my shoulder too heavy. <laughs> so I laid there and waited for him to call me back. <laughs> he called me back. He said, Miss Brewer, he used to work with me. He said, Miss Brewer, <laughs> he said, You got a brother. <laughs> He said, you got a brother. 
stands real tall, real tall. But the first thing he said, he said, do we got dreads? I said, no. So I laid that over. I laid that over. I just laid it over. And then he came back. He said, no, 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 baby. That was my brother. He said, but this man came to me and sat on my back. He said, he said, he kept saying, Tata, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord Jesus. I said, what you mean, what you mean, what you mean? He said, tell him I'm sorry, just tell her I'm sorry, just tell her I'm sorry. I'm her brother, Pete. <laughs> Two weeks went past, not knowing that I had broke up with my child. Didn't matter nothing. <laughs> Why did my brother come and visit me? Why did my brother come and call for me? He came and called for me because my son, my son, Lord Jesus, that's my heart. Ever since he got out of jail, he's been going, trying and trying and trying. The other day, Lord, he gave up, and he gave me that phone call. I never want again. I never want that phone call again. So the Lord sent me here with no lashes on. I couldn't find the glue to put my lashes on this morning. I usually wear my ways in my head. But I put this scarf on, and I went in my mama room. I said, ain't this how y'all used to wear y'all stuff? <laughs> she said, they did, but not me. <laughs> I said, I know you're a pretty girl. <laughs> but other than that, I ain't wear no perfume. I was talking about wearing a dress with a little side side, you know. He said, no, I'm starting you off fresh with no perfume with no eyelashes, with no hair in your head, with no glue in your eyes. But the thing for my brother coming to me was, I heard a gunshot. <laughs> After my son gave me that phone call. Wow. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. heard that pss, Sonia, because that pss was telling me to get up and come up here and do my testimony before 12 o'clock tonight, because other than that, he tried to bring me here two weeks ago. He tried to bring me here before Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. I got to work. That's why when I said, when I came here and sung right here, I said the Lord will put something in your way to bring you in his house. He will put something in your face to make you see he is the light and he is the darkness. But yet then, when I heard that gunshot, my son said, Mama, I don't want to be here no more. He went in that room, and he got that pistol. <laughs> he went out the door. I said, Lord, please, I don't care. It just came to my head. Put it in my hands, and I handled it. My kids, my mama, my house, my job, everything. My car. He said, but who I want most of all is you. I 
I sit in that room, I sing them gospel songs. I shut that door and I said to the Lord, I don't want to step in no church because my church is at home. He said, no, baby. I hear my sisters changing over to a Hebrew. You say a Hebrew is a ours. You said Egypt was us. Yes, baby, Egypt is us. But they tried to take it away from us when they sold us after Egypt. They tried to take it away from us when they was beating us. They tried to take it away from us when they was sitting up there telling us we can't have them type of jobs. We can't, what, Carnell? Own no business. What, um, Miss Lady? Own no houses. Or something that's ours. But the most thing that killed me is when my son, I'm fat, I'm going to take my life. <laughs> yeah, I sat there and Glenda ran through my head. My sister ran through my head. But when it got to my brother, it stopped right there. And the Lord said, that's what he said, sorry, boy. <laughs> my son didn't do it. <laughs> he didn't do it. God gonna take care of your son. He don't take my child away from me. God is gonna take care. In this world, that the Lord can take away from me, and that's this lady standing right here in my child. I had that son. I've been by that son's side. I said, Lord, take. Let's give God praise. Everything is going to be all right. Somebody give God praise. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Struggling from time to time to get right. Living for you, Jesus, can be a fight. I never would have made it without you. 
Struggling from time to time to get right. Living for you, Jesus, can be a fight. I never would have made it without you. If you leave me, where would I be? Please, Jesus. Don't. That I made it this far for the rest of my existence, Lord. I wanna be wherever you are. Please, Jesus. Whatever you do, yeah. don't leave. Say please. You died for my soul. Are you living in me? Make me whole, please, Jesus. Whatever you do, Lord, don't leave me alone. Your grace. It was by your grace, Lord, that I made it this far. For the rest of my existence, Lord, I want to be wherever you are. Don't ever leave. Don't ever leave. Alone. Come on and help me sing.
more time. Sing please. 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 Don't ever leave. say that today. You don't want the Lord to leave you alone. Oh, bless him in this place today. Come on, bless him in here today. We made it to the end of a new year. And we all can agree that the Lord did not leave us alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Got my little gadget, y'all. Tablet up a little higher because sometimes it's too low for me to read. But I thank the Lord for another opportunity to spread His word once again to His people. We're living in the last days and we have to really be careful of what we do in the life we live in this season because. Time is winding up, and the devil ain't playing games with God's people, but he's doing everything in his power to distract and deter, deter you from moving forward. And so many people are paralyzed with going backwards. They're stuck in the mentality of regression, can't get over the issues and the problems they engage throughout the years, so their mind become like a broken record over and over and over replaying the same old things and events that happen in their life and can't progress past those things so I want to this, this morning this afternoon want to talk about seal the deal pastor was talking about it earlier it just stuck in my spirit and I was reading a scripture this week and I think to God for the praise team. Thank God for our pastor, for, for, for his wife, and for all of you, our father's children, and truly a blessing all of those in the house today. God is doing something great in this season. I don't know about you, but as this new year is approaching, there are new things that God is going to do in all of our lives as we progress forward in the new season. The new year brings a new season. All week long, it's been in my spirit about a new season. And the Lord began to speak to me, and he says, many people cannot see God moving them to a new season. They're stuck in the mentality of the brokenness. I talked about last week briefly. I talked about a car door being broken and a window being shattered. And that's what God put in my spirit, is that that's what's happening today in the body of Christ. We're like a broken door with a shattered glass. And God says, as everything has been broken in your life, we're not letting him fix the broken pieces. You cannot progress in brokenness if you don't allow God to deal with your mentality. God is trying to speak to us in this season after year is coming to an end. That means finality. That means that 2023 is in the final stage of progressing past. 
right? And as we begin to engage in 2024, we have to see ourselves the way God wants to see us. You cannot go into 2024 with the same old baggage. Hold on to the same old garbage. You got to let God cleanse your mind, cleanse your heart, wash it clean, purify your thoughts and your actions from the things of the flesh that got you bound up, the same old habits, same old addiction. I love Dee Dee. I love our sister so much. And I thank God for the post she put on Facebook because it's an eye opening to myself. And I tell you, when she speaks, she's speaking prophetically under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And God is, is really trying to get our attention. If we really pay attention to the details, there's a message in a message. If you see a message that's inspirational, there's a detail in that message. It's designed just for you. But we can't see it. You know why? We let the enemy blind us from seeing what God wants to see. In this coming year, I'm going to pray in a minute, but in this coming year, God spoke to me a couple of days ago on my prayer line. And he says, in this coming year, people are going to start businesses. Some won't get the house they're looking for. Some won't get new cars and get new possessions. He said, they're getting materialistic things. But most of all, what I want to give them is myself. In the coming year, I want them to give, give them a passion and a desire for more of me to fill them. We read on our, on our devotion every morning on our prayer line, more of you, God. Because that's what we should have a desire for. God, I want more of you, more of your power, more of your anointing. Fill me, God. Change my mind. Change my heart. Blow my mind, God. Don't let me have the same thoughts I thought on yesterday. Because when God begins to shift you, I remember, remember a prophet Abel talked about the shift. When God begins to shift you, pastor said all the time, it becomes uncomfortable. When God begins to shift you to a different direction in your life, it makes you uncomfortable. It makes you edgy. It makes you bitter. Sometimes it makes you angry. It's like, why God? Oh, this is happening to me. You know what God does? God told me this last week. He said, when I'm shifting you, I let trouble go. Ooh. Ain't that something? When I begin to shift you, I let trouble come. You know why? Remember Jesus on the boat and the disciples were asleep? And the storm rose. That was trouble. They were in trouble. They began to panic, right? I may you stand over the room. I'm going to pray in just a second. Everybody stand, please. And, and as they begin to panic, what they do? Jesus, wake up. We about to perish. Right? They panicked. But it was the best thing that happened to them. Because it showed them the measure of their faith. Because they really didn't trust them like they thought they did. See, God will let some things happen to you to see if you really trust me. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for the worship that's gone forth. Thank you for the musician. Thank you for the leadership in this church. For every member, God, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, have your way in this moment as I speak your word. Father God, in the unction of the Holy Ghost, Father, give me revelation to speak by your spirit that will blow our minds, change our hearts for the better. Forgive us, God, for the many times we failed to trust you, the times we doubted your word, we got caught up in the things of the world, discombobulated, God, and confused by the things we were doing. But now, God, let us be focused to hear from you. Let us remove the business of the day, the things we're thinking about doing when we leave this place, God. But let us focus and hear from you, God, at this moment. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. You may be seated. You don't have to stand. I'm going to read a passage of the scripture in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. And it says, Brethren, He's talking about the believers, the body of Christ. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. 
I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He was sealing the deal. And that's why I said seal the deal. But if you go up to the verse before that, verse 12, so not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So Paul was speaking to the church at Philippi. He was making it known unto them that I'm not perfect. I have flaws, character defects. I have issues. I'm like anybody else. I got problems. But one thing I'm not going to do is dwell on those problems. I'm not going to dwell on myself and the things that got me all messed up and discombobulated. I'm not going to dwell on those things, Pastor, because those are not going to help me. He said, I haven't attained what he's saying is that I'm not what I need to be just yet to the completeness. He said, but I follow after. Follow after what? The word of God. I'm following Christ Jesus, who is the word. So he says, because of this, he said, if that I may apprehend, that means get hold of, get a revelation, get understanding. That for which I am also apprehended. Guess what? Christ apprehended us. He got our attention. He drew us to himself. He called us his own possession. The word says his treasure, his prized possession. And he says, I apprehended you by Christ. Then he says, but brethren, he said, I do not keep reminding myself of a broken record. I was looking at something. He says, I forget the ground I have covered the race. I cannot waste time over the past. And one thing I thought about when I read this before, I, I used it on a radio show too, and, and I read this. And as Paul was talking, he used the analogy of a human race. You, we all seen the marathons, and we've seen the, the, the sprint race and all the different type of races that are going on. And everybody is running a race to win a tangible crown or a reward, right? And he says that this race, I cannot keep on reminding myself of the mess ups, of the hang ups, the bad habits, the issues that I've been dealing with. I can't keep going over those things if I keep being distracted. What, what happens if a person running a race and all of a sudden they, they turn their head from looking and they go forward? If there's an obstacle in the way, what's going to happen? They're going to fall, all right? Because they're going to trip over something that's a stir, their vision. And when God showed me this, said this race, I cannot waste time. Stop wasting time, people. We're about to go to a new year. God says, stop wasting time over your mess up, the things that hurt you, the broken relationship, the past. Let it go. Stop crying over spilled milk. Let God wipe the tears from your eyes to cleanse your heart and your mind to perfect you, to build you up in your faith, to keep moving forward. Then he says, I reach forth to that which is before me in the race. I strain every nerve and muscle and every use of ounce of my strength to win. My future depends on it. Isn't that good? So every muscle, every nerve in your body, you got to keep on exercising, keep building your spiritual muscle. You know one thing about a bodybuilder? When they enter into a competition, they spent years of preparation for this competition. Build on muscles, get all structured up where they want to be. Why? They get all buff because I got to win this competition. I have a son-in-law that, that used to be in a bodybuilding competition, and he won. And Paul is saying that every nerve and muscle in my body, every ounce of my strength, I'm making preparation because I got to go forward. I cannot go forward if I let naysayers and people keep talking about me and distracting me and keep me from my purpose. You got a lot of haters 
in your family, in your church, your community, places you go, people hate you for just no reason. They just don't like the way you look. Sister Dave, I don't like you. Why? I don't know. I just don't like you. That's what they do. Don't have no accusation, any reason to really come against Sister Davis, but I don't like her. And all she's been doing is pouring out love, giving to people, helping folk, call me when you need prayer, come on, just seek me when I'm here for you when you need me. But we get to the place where we let somebody divide us from coming to church because of a rumor. It's nothing valid, nothing of truth. But a rumor, a cancer in the body of Christ. So I let that thing spread into my spirit to corrupt me in a bitter and a foul attitude to stop coming to church. The devil is a lie. The Lord rebuked that spirit in the name of Jesus. So Paul says, he said, I press towards the mark that is I pursue. Check this out the white line in the stadium which, which all the runners must keep their eyes fixed. You know what he's talking about? So when you see the marathons, at the end of that, that marathon race or that, that sprint race, whatever it is, there's a line, a barrier that they have to cross to beat the other competitors. So Paul is saying that as I'm running this race, there's, I keep my eyes on ending that race because when I cross that line, I want to say I won. Woo, Jesus. We have to get to the place in ourselves. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you backstab me. I don't care about you talking to me. I don't care. Come out here for you. I'm here to win the race. Ooh, glory to God. And Paul makes it clear, lest I be disqualified for the prize. If I let anyone in here stop me from doing what I love to do most, serving God, he said, I'll be disqualified. Because I've proven myself I'm not worthy to run this race. So I quit. And Paul makes it clear. As we fix our eyes on the prize, you know who your prize is? Your eternal reward with Jesus Christ. That one day when I go before the judgment seat of Christ, that beam of seat of Christ, and I stand before him, he look me eye to eye, and he says, my good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things, now come on up higher, I'm going to make you rule over many. That's what we're looking for at the end of our race, where Jesus said, I welcome you into the kingdom, because you served in the earthly world in a kingdom that's in me, but because the world is not your home, I got a better place for you, that you got to come and reign with me forever in the heavenly kingdom. Oh, my God. I, I, tell, I get excited over this type of messages. And, and one thing I, I love about Paul, he says, I forget. So I got to get to a place where when my mind, I'm sitting at home by myself, my mind says, well, you got a bad habit, you got an addiction, just keep pondering this thing, keep talking about, this. Keep, keep talking about your failures, keep talking about your mistakes, God, God going to judge you, God don't care about you, God, he, he, he going to beat you down because you, you just ain't living right, you got some bad habits, you got some stuff in your closet that God trying to get out of you, but because you are stuck in a dark place, you can't let God come in, so God says, you know what, I've been trying to come in, Joe, but you keep blocking me. God says, stop blocking me because I'm trying to come in to purify you. I cannot purify you if you got a wall up that's preventing me from coming in. Glory to God. We got to get to the place where I tell old Slewfoot, the devil, devil, you right, I was a homosexual. You right, I was a liar. You right, I was a doctor. You right, I was a girl. I was cursed and cut folks out. I did this, I did that. You have to be right. But thank God for Jesus. Because the blood of the Lamb is sacrificed for me. The way I was a wretch undone, love lifted me. Well, God heard my despairing cry. When I was singing far from the peaceful shore, he said, I can't let you be the end of your life like this. I can't let you go into the new year like this. I got to show you my grace and my mercy. I got to show you how much I love you. I got to show you how much I care about you. How much I washed you in the blood of hell. I cleanse your mind and your heart. I gave you my spirit. Therefore, you're born of God and you're washed in it love. 
Woo, glory to God. When I know that I know, I'm not going back. I'm moving forward. Because in my future, it's brighter than my past. My promise is right before my eyes. And the devil trying to distract me. I made up my mind. I'm going to keep on pressing forward. I'm going to keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand. I don't care if you talk about me. Because the more you talk about me, you push me to my promise. The more you slander me, you took me to my prize. The more you talk about me and scandalize my name, you call it God to bless me even more. Because he said, when I bless for my enemies, those who talk about me, who pray, to kill me. He said, like, God, you bless them because I bless you in return because of your heart. I know that I know that I know. I know that I know that I know. I've been redeemed in Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter what my past look like. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells me when I press towards the prize of the icon of God in Christ Jesus, I have to be a newborn creature, a new man in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Because Jesus, he goes before me. Because Jesus, he's holding me by the hand. He's holding me to my purpose. He's holding me to my promise. He's holding me to my blessing. He's calling to a higher calling because I love you so much. I gotta pull you up higher. Don't let the devil stop you from your purpose. You were created for purpose. God's I put purpose inside of you. Therefore, the purpose is the high calling of God. That upon your anointing, you got to walk like you're walking, you're walking. You got to walk when you're walking, when you're walking. In your purpose, in your authority, I take back my authority. I take back my blessings. The devil is a liar. I will not be hindered. I will not be held up anymore. I got my mind made up. No more turning back closer. No more going back to the vomit. Because Jesus said, if you put your hands to a plow, start tilling the field, and you look backwards, you're not fit for the kingdom. Oh, wretched man that I am. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me? from this body of death. But then he came to the realization where I was down there persecuting God's people, where I was scandalizing their name, I was mistreating God's folk. I found out. Thank God to Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Because he looked at me where I was down in my mess. I was down in my garbage. I was wandering in the mud, like the prodigal son. I was lost and didn't conceive my way. But I heard a voice of Jesus say, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Beautiful, he heard your cry. Say, Come to me. Though you really will do it, don't give up. Don't you faint. Don't throw in the towel. Cause I know the burdens that are on your shoulder. But I am the answer. Because if you come to me, I'll give you my yoke. <laughs> my yoke is easy. And my burdens are light. I'll take the gloom in your darkness. I'll give you sunshine in a dark and dreary day. I'll call the lights of my glory to shine on you. 
because I want to fill you like never before. There's a greater anointing in the coming year, Pastor. God says, about to rain on you with power. You haven't seen the power yet. You saw a glimpse of the power. But God said that in a new year, there's an endowment of the Spirit about to fall upon you like never before. God's a greater elevation. There's a bishop anointed upon you. God said, will call you to be elevated in the kingdom of God. Bishop anointing. There's a bishop anointing. I saw it a while ago. And God says, I'm a validator. You're going to see it. So no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither have entered the heart of those whom God loved, prepared for those who he got for you. But he says, guess what? I'm going to show you. As you spend time in the presence, God says, there's a rain going to fall upon you. He called it the latter rain. So the latter rain going to fall. It's going to drench you. You're going to get soaked in the latter rain. And God says, you just tapped into a glimpse of the blessings. But when the rain begins to flood, oh, you says the Spirit of God. There's a greater blessing coming to your life. God says, expansion in your finances, expansion in your health, expansion in your family. God says, there's a greater increase coming upon you in this new year. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise in here today. I can't help myself. I have to release it. When God began to move by his spirit, healing, Florida, you, Charlene, and Anthony, healing, a greater measure of healing, says the spirit of God is flowing into your life. God says there's been burdens on your shoulder, but the day they've been lifted. God says I'm taking you to a higher elevation in anointing because the prophetic anointing by the evil wax more keener in the spirit, says God, because you are faithful to him. God says there's greater revelation you ain't tapped into yet, but there's a well. God says there's a well that flows with the rivers of revelation by the flow to you, says that's the Spirit of God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost done. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you, God. Once you stand out of the room, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Angelic anointing upon Didi. There's an angelic anointing upon Didi, says the Spirit of God. There's an angelic anointing upon Didi. The reason she seen the way she does, she tapped into the kingdom. God said when she tapped into the kingdom, she don't know what she released. There's been a great explosion in her spirit because of what God is doing in the season, in her life. Transition of faith. God said there's a transitional faith that God has begun to burst inside of you. You keep being faithful. Don't let distractions come. I don't care where it comes from. Don't let it come. God said, let it go. Let it go. Just go past it. Say, I'm moving ahead. I'm not looking back. I'm moving ahead. I'm not looking back. I'm moving ahead. I'm not looking back. Because there's a great anointing upon our life. Keep moving forward. Say, it's the Spirit of God. God says, you've been crying over some things you're wanting God to do for you in this season. Say, it haven't happened just yet, but God says, that's a great anointing about to release what you've been praying for. Upon your life, says the Spirit of God, because he said, I heard your cry in the midnight hour. Those time, tears streamed by your face. The time when nobody understood what you're going through, and they talked about you, even turned their back on you when you need them the most. The people weren't even there, but God says, I was there the whole time. As you move forward, God says, I'm going to even burst some songs inside of you. I heard that a while ago. God says, there's a psalmist anointing that's flowing in your spirit to create and write songs. And I'm about to birth it through you, says the Spirit of God, to set you up for a greater blessing. Oh, my God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God for your prophetic word that it will not fall upon deaf ears but he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church as father you do it right now in the name of Jesus seal this word in the blood of the lamb that the thief cannot steal this word 
You said the sword went forth, the soul word. And some fell upon stones, some upon thorns, some on rocky places. But the word that was sown in the soil was a productive word. And I'm believing God is going to come forth in this season. As you spoke it, you said, I'm not a man, I shall lie, no son of man in repentance. But when I speak, I'm able to perform it. I'm believing God, you're going to do it in this season. I lift up every person in this place, oh God. Whatever their heart's desires are, God. Every situation, every issue, everything weighing on their spirit today, God. Let them find a release today in your spirit. Let them find themselves resting at your feet. That you lift it off their shoulders. That you take the yoke and give it to them, God. Because your yoke is easy. And you say you take their burdens upon yourself. Now do it, God, in Jesus' name. I bind every demonic force, every attack against your people, God, in this place, and their families, their children, their children's children. We rebuke the devourer. We come against the spirit of death in the name of Jesus that none of our family members would die in this new year, God. But they shall prosper in health as their souls prosper in the spirit. I thank you, O oh God. Like Jesus said that you hear me, God. And you will answer according to your will. Be it done unto them according to their faith, O oh God. And now, Lord, I ask that you increase our faith to go beyond the limitations. The things you've been speaking to us in our hearts to do, God. Give us a holy boldness to do it, God. To walk by faith and not by sight. In the promises of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give to God praise. Let's give God praise again for Pastor Charles Emery. Each of you, each of you, like Pastor as he preached, y'all all have a purpose. How many know purpose is just like that transition, it don't really feel good when God has a purpose of your life. You know, even when Paul talks about I press, your purpose will cause you to press. Your purpose will cause you to press. Under pressure, I press. Depression, I press. Going through hell, I press. Uh, yeah, both sides. I don't think y'all understand what I'm talking about right here. But listen, I want you to lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Pastor prayed for you. And I want y'all to believe God for this next move. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, listen, repeat after me, then I'm going to close it. Say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins, knowing and unknowingly. Come into my heart and in my life and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for giving me, somebody say giving me, point to yourself when you say it, giving me a second chance to get it right. Amen. Now, Father, I know we are. Okay. Huh? Okay. I'm going to finish close. I was going to do that after this. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Now I just want to pray over you then. We're going to do the bidding action after this. Lay your hands on yourself. Our Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your healing power. I thank you for purpose. I thank you for provision. 
I pray right now that God, as you give the leader back what he poured out in his place, that God, I, I pray that you would give your people the strength to continue to fight, to continue to believe, to continue to have hope. For the Bible said faith is some of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So God, I thank you for not letting me see it because I believe that you're going to do it. I thank you, God, because if I seen it before you did it, I would have turned my back. So I thank you in advance, God, for the things that you're doing in my, somebody say, my life. I thank you, for I am no longer going to look like what I've been through in 2023 as I prepare myself in my family for 2024. The way I used to talk, the what I used to do, I am no longer going to do it in 2024. Somebody give God praise right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead. So, y'all hear me? So, Youth Involved in 2024, January Challenge. $50 gift card to the young person ages 5 through 18 who can recite the most books of the Bible. Reciter will be doing or after service January 28, 2024. Amen? Amen. Y'all hear that? Now you said to 18, not 28 or 38 or 48 or 58, right? But the kids, $50 gift card, y'all. Get y'all heads in those Bibles. Not yet. This challenge is coming from April Lane. Amen. Youth Involved More in 2024, Redeemed Faith Fellowship would like to extend an invitation to all of the youth to participate in 2024. Youth Involved More campaign. We want you to be spiritually prepared to glorify God in the world that glorifies sin. This is the year that we are excited to involve you more and offer incentives for your growth and learning in Christ. Every month we will have a new challenge for you. And at the end of, the, of each month, you will have the opportunity to win prizes for what you have learned. We also want you to have a rap session where the church leadership comes together with you and answers, answer questions you may have. We are looking forward to engaging our youth with spiritual and practical applications to encourage growth and spiritual awareness. More announcements and details will follow each month. Thank you from Redeemed Faith Youth Department. Amen? Amen. That's going to be God awesome. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. I'm going to put out a challenge, and I know that's a great challenge, and I, I, I applaud uh, Prophetess Lane for doing that. She mentioned it to me before, and she finally got that together. She sent it to me. I thank you for that. I see God doing something great for the youth. Now, I know during COVID, COVID set some challenges down, and we haven't been doing everything that we used to do for the youth, and so my challenge I'm about the grades and the report cards and stuff like that. So I want to challenge the youth. You got to be involved in the ministry. You got to come to church. I mean, you know, the ones that are coming to church, I want to challenge you that I'm going to put a PS5 on it. Whoever got the best report card at the end of the year, they can put a PS5 on it. I'm going to make it even interesting. So if PS5, you can get the PS5 or you can get the cash. Because some, some, some of the females don't like the PS5. Some might want the cash. So I'm going to put that on it. So whoever got the best report card, the best report card, it's going to be different categories. So it's going to be, 
You know, I'm not just going to make it so easy so the little kid's going to be able to win that. And, uh, you know, because I know I got some, I got some, I got some youth in here on the dean's list right now. Amen. So y'all about to get on it. Amen. Open. I did always open. Amen. So it's PS5. So that's putting five on it. God said I, I put grace on it. Amen. So as we're standing all over the building, we're getting ready to go. And I'm, I'm definitely looking forward on seeing you guys tonight. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the service. I thank you for your people. I ask, oh, Lord, that when we leave this place, but never from your presence, may you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. Bring your testimony. Bring your songs. Tonight, tonight is going down. We're going to cover this floor. We're going to cover this floor with our past issues. We're going to leave it, and we're going to give God praise for the next season in our life. Let the church say amen.